Steve is with us. Steve's in New York City. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hey, Dave and John. Thanks for taking my call. I appreciate it. Sure. What's up? Uh, well, recently retired, uh, about a year now, 53 years old. Uh, I have my work retirement, but uh, my mom had passed away uh, about 18 months ago. Mm-hmm. We sold her house, and I inherited uh, 150000 that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, now it's up to me to uh, to invest it through mutual funds. I'm not super duper com- comfortable with it, mm-hmm. I and mean, I have some ideas. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't I don't know between regular mutual funds, tax deferred mutual funds. Mm-hmm. Uh, do I go all in with the 150, or do I piecemeal it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And okay. uh, do you have like any that. debt? Um, currently, just my uh, one son's college. He's a senior. How much do you owe on that? Uh, we probably owe another thirty-five thousand for him. Okay, we need to set that aside, right? Uh, yeah, we have that, and we have some savings. Okay, and so there's no debt associated with the college. You just have an obligation. Correct. Okay. All right. Do you have a home mortgage? Uh, not any longer. Nope. Good for you. Good for you. Okay, couple of things on investing. Um, let's start at the top. Number one, you don't invest in things that you don't understand. You never invest in things because some goob on the radio like me said do it, or some goob on the internet that's even worse said do it. Okay, so you understand it. And the Bible says in the multitude of counsel there is safety, and what that means is you get some experts around you to give you advice, and the advice is not that you follow the expert. The advice is so that you understand something you didn't understand before. So your financial people need to have the heart of a teacher so that when you sit down with your financial person and you get up and leave, you need to know something you didn't know before you sit down every time, every time. I spent an hour and a half in my office yesterday with our chief digital officer and three of our top uh, senior uh, tech guys, and they were trying to teach me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's about, why you're in such a great mood today, about, man. About, a digital, about our digital platform. And I, don't, I, I do not have to be a digital expert to be the CEO of this digital company, but I do have to grasp the vernacular. And I do have to grasp enough of it to help them to make wise decisions under their help. So the multitude of counsel, these experts are in my office teaching me about my company yesterday. In this case, they're teaching you about your money that you inherited from your the passing of your parent, right? And, and so you're right. going to gather that up. You do not have to have an MBA in finance in order to make easy financial decisions, basic investing decisions. Now... So rule number one is you don't want to do it unless you understand it. Rule number two is you put somebody in your life that has the heart of a teacher. You can click SmartVestor Pro at DaveRamsey.com or SmartVestor and find the person in your area we recommend. They don't work for us. Um, they pay us an endorsement fee, and they have to agree to approach your investing the way that we teach and with the heart of a teacher. I personally invest, Steve, inside my retirement accounts in four types of mutual funds, growth, growth and income, aggressive growth, and international. Outside of retirement accounts, those funds all create taxes each year as they grow. That's a problem. There's two ways to avoid that with your 150000 My preference is, and the one that I personally do, is I invest in mutual funds, growth stock mutual funds, that have what's called a low turnover ratio. Now, you ready for the teaching part? Okay. Here we go. If you buy a rental house for $200,000 and it goes up in value to $300,000 and you still own it, you do not owe taxes on that $100,000 in growth because you've not sold the house. Agreed? Correct. So you've got capital gains growth, but you don't have any taxes because you've not sold it. Stock is the same way. If a share of stock goes from $50 to $70, you don't pay taxes on that $20 gain until you sell it. Same is true inside a mutual fund. The turnover ratio is when they sell the stock inside the mutual fund. If it has a 90% turnover ratio, that means almost all the stocks get sold every year, and so all those gains are going to be taxable every year. If they have yeah, a five percent, right? if they have a five percent turnover ratio, which is a low turnover ratio, that means you're not going to pay taxes on the increase in value 
until you sell the mutual fund because they aren't selling the stocks inside the mutual funds hardly at all. Much like that rental oh. house or that share of stock. Did that make sense? Oh. It, it definitely did. So uh, that low turnover, what number am I looking at? Is it, is it under really 10? You want an under 10% or? turnover ratio. Under 10%. Okay. Yeah, because anything that turns over, the gain is they're going to send you a tax bill on the gain every year. Every, every year, yes. Okay. So you want it to not turn over hardly at all so that it only grows without taxes until you sell it. Now, if you hold it a year, when you sell it, you're going to be taxed at capital gains rate 15 percent rather than the ordinary income rate 30 percent 40 percent so right. the tax okay, rate I mean, the I tax guess, rate's yeah. also much lower for you so it's tax efficient two different ways one is you're not taxed till you sell it and two is when you do sell it it's, a, it's taxed at a capital gains rate your smart investor pro can help you with every bit of that and finish teaching you what i did in five minutes but that's the whole thing all you got to do is learn some basic things like that they're not this is not rocket science you just got to have somebody knows their stuff, and they show you how, and then you know your stuff. So you do it smart. 